There's a couple of ways we can dimension an ARCAD, both manually and automatically. So first of all, we're going to have a look at the dimensioning tool, and that's under the document section of the toolbox. And if we double click on it, this palette opens up here. If we have any favorites, we can click on that and that will come up. But as I don't have any favorites selected, we'll work through the rest of the tool palette. If I expand the type of font here, we've got a number of different ways we can dimension. So we can have the linear method, which is probably the standard way that most architects do it. Then we have the cumulative method and then the baseline method. And these are exactly the same other than the way that they're represented on the floor plan. And then, of course, we have an elevation dimension. The marker type refers to how or what sort of marker you want placed in between each dimension. And I'm just going to leave that as it is there. Static dimension, if I check that, which is not a good idea on ARCHICAD, it will make all the dimensions static and you won't, they won't be associative to the objects on the floor plan. Then we can choose the pens, 256 colours to choose from. For the marker, I'm going to leave that as it is also. And then we've got the pen for the witness line. Now the witness line can have arrows at either end like that. It can have arrows with a short witness line. And then it can have a witness line of a certain length. And then it can also have a dynamic height. And this means that it will always draw the witness line close to a designated point or designated wall. So if, if I was dimensioning this wall over here, and the dimension marker was out here, it would draw a witness line to that wall. So I'm just going to leave that. Here we can choose the font. Just going to use, just going to use Arial Narrow there. The height of it, the height will be two millimeters. And then we can choose whether it's bold, italic, or underline, normal font stuff. Um, then where the text will sit on top or in between the line or underneath the line. And then the pen size for the font. So once we've accepted all that, we can go to the mark and witness line options. We can define the length of the witness line. We can define the length of the dynamic witness gap. So the amount of distance there is between the witness line and the item that you're dimensioning. And that's grayed out at the moment because we don't have that option selected in the type and font up there. And then we're going to have a custom witness line length, and that's 150 millimeters there. I might just make that 500. And then dimension details. We've got the option of displaying the height as well as the width of openings, such as that. And if we check this, we can dimension only the core of composite and complex walls. So if we accept all that, I'm just going to show you where we can find that setting there. If I push OK. And if I go to Options, Element Attributes, Composites, in this dialog box here, this is where we can choose the core. This here is the core and the core component. So if I tick that or untick it, it will dimension or not dimension. I'll just choose something different. Over there, it's going to dimension everything in that wall. However, if I choose to not call that a core, now it won't dimension that. So I'm just going to cancel that. So that's all OK. Then finally down here we've got the layer that we're going to put the dimension on. So I'm going to leave that there. Push OK. Let's just say I wanted to dimension this building here. New for version 12 is we don't have to designate whether we're going to dimension horizontally or vertically. So I just I can leave that as is. And then you zoom in so your project is as large as it can be. And there's no wrong or right way to do this, but there's a couple of techniques that may you might find quicker than others. You can either click on every node, and when a tick comes up or a black pencil comes up, that's when you know you've got the right dimension or the right node on the wall. And then double-click out here. Once you double-click out in the open, the hammer symbol comes up and if I click again that's where it's going to place that dimension string. Another way to do this is click on one side then the opposite side, double click and place that dimension there and then hold the shift key down and select it then hold the control key down and and just wait for the tick to come up and you can move along quickly like that too. You can also wait for the trident symbol to come up 
that will dimension both sides of the wall. So for example if I wanted to measure both sides of this wall I might place a tick there, tick there and then select that. If I wait till the mouse cursor becomes a trident I can click once and it'll pick up both sides of the wall. If I don't do that I can just pick up each side of the wall one at a time. If you're having trouble selecting a point and zoom in a little bit more and then you should be able to pick up the other side quite easily. So if I wanted to dimension something manually quite quickly I could use the same technique. So then I've placed one dimension and I select it holding the shift key down then with my left mouse button I select that and to multiply it I would hold my left mouse button down and click on this button here, multiply, just say we want three copies of that, push OK, drag those out and then as I dimension the building I hold the shift key down, select the first line, we can see that it's selected by it's all green and then holding the control key down if I want to grab these walls here for example I'm waiting for the trident to come up and then I'm getting both sides of the wall click in the white area to release it hold the shift key down, select the next line and control key and then I'm going to grab those items there hold the shift key down, select the next line and I might just grab the openings here waiting for the tick to come up before I click and then so I've got four lines of dimensions there that I've done manually the dimension line consists of the witness line, the markers, the dimension line and the text. By clicking anywhere on the dimension line we actually pick the actual dimension and the settings appear in our toolbar. To select the text I would have to pick this little marker here and once selected we have access to the settings for that piece of text for the annotation. One interesting thing here is that at some point on this horizontal toolbar you will find where it says measured value. What that means is that this dimension over here as the length of the change it will always read the value which has been initially which has been initially measured off the object. As this dimension is associated with the object, if I change the length of that wall, the dimension will reflect that change. So I'll just fix this. Now I'll get back to the text. The measured value can also be changed to a custom text where a new value can be entered or additional information can be added to that text. What that means is that this actually breaks the link between the dimension and the object that's being measured. Now if I change the length of the object the actual dimension will change however the actual text has been converted to plain text and it's not intelligent and doesn't change. Very quickly one more thing about the text is that once it's set to custom text you have two fields one in which you can type in certain information and then the following little text field relates to superscript so I could add some sort of information which probably doesn't make much sense at the moment but it shows what the dimension text is capable of so if I switch back to measured value we have the dimension length and the text all restored to its parametric glory the other thing the text can be dragged and moved just by grabbing that handle down there and you can position that anywhere you like within the drawing. It can actually be rotated as well to any angle. And if we wanted to revert this text to its original position, we don't actually have to move it. You just select it and the last item on the horizontal toolbar is revert to automatic position. So we just click on that and it will force the text to go back to its original position. Now new to ARCHICAD 12 is the ability to insert dimensions both horizontally, vertically and aligned dimensions with the same 
set of tools. There's no longer a need to switch between horizontal, vertical and dimensions. If I was to dimension the length of this wall, which is at 45 degrees, starting at this point to this point, and then when we double click we're presented with the hammer icon, and before we click one more time, we're presented with a compass type gizmo, which allows us to line up the dimensions either horizontally, vertically, or parallel, or aligned to the object that we're trying to dimension. So in my case I just want to line this up parallel to the wall that I've dimensioned. So we want that at 45 degrees, I might position this here. Also new in ARCHICAD 12 is the new pet palette that pops up when we click on a dimension string. And we'll just move that over here. And this pet palette has got fairly obvious functionality like drag which allows us to move the dimension to a new position and you'll notice that even if I move that dimension at an angle the dimension will stay it, it, where it is because it's locked to this wall it will always follow that wall the other option is rotate which may sound a little bit silly but sometimes if you needed a set of dimensions projected onto a different direction you could actually rotate a dimension to any angle that you like like so obviously the length or the value of the dimension changes because you're actually now the now the length of this wall is projected at this angle so the dimension will be different so obviously the value is going to read differently but it's actually a correct dimension the other option is to mirror the dimension. That would allow me to throw the dimension to the other side of the object pretty quickly. And the last one is multiply. I'll get back to multiply in a moment. And these functions existed in the previous version of ARCHICAD but now they're just available from the pet palette. Having this dimension as an overall for this wall I could click. If we click on the first icon and I can add additional points to which a dimension should be drawn. So I could dimension the thickness of this wall if I wanted to. I could obviously dimension the opening for the wall, so I just have to click on one of the nodes. So I have to find some sort of snapping point that ARCHICAD is prepared to show us. The next option there is to realign the dimension to another object. So in my case, I've drawn this dimension at 45 degrees to follow this wall, but now if I wanted to find out the dimension or the dimensioning of this wall, or if that was projected onto the x-axis of the horizontal wall, and I just point to one of the horizontal walls that will define the direction for the new dimension, and the, and the dimensions will be rotated and lined up with the direction that I've clicked on. I could also align the dimension with this wall here and obviously I may have to move it out a little bit. I could also revert it back to the line, it back to the 45 degree of the wall. The last option is, actually you have to be very careful when you're changing between options, make sure you click on the actual dimension string. Over here I've selected the text and that's not going to work so I pick an empty bit of the dimension string and I pick the last option because that's when the pet palette will come up and that gives us the ability to expand the witness line. So at the moment by default they're set to 350 millimeters I think and I can just extend those to all the way to the wall for example and now I can clearly see where those witness lines are coming from and they can be positioned anywhere including the opposite direction. There is also two ways we can dimension in the elevation window. The automatic method doesn't work in this window. First of all we have to pick the correct geometry method and if I select this icon here 
I can merely click on anywhere that gives me a tick and using the same methods we described on the floor plan we can place dimensions. To place a height I merely have to select this icon here and there's a number of different options there and I can just click where the pencil gives me a node and double click and I place those levels. We also have a radial dimension tool so if I just close that we in fact have many ways of dimensioning an arc by selecting the linear method and choosing the arc length icon we can just click on the wall and double click inside and then that gives us a dimension or we can click on the outside and that gives us a dimension but also we can dimension it by using the angle tool and dimension even on the inside clicking one too many times there and we can also dimension using the radial tool by simply left mouse clicking on it dragging out and it places a radial dimension these also have parameters so there are also variations to the tool so it's very easy to dimension almost anything in ARCHICAD